we already know what we know. But sometimes, we just need to listen. Edge of the fiscal cliff. <laughs> We're getting ready to fall off. You know, it was interesting, yesterday I received a comment on one of my videos, a video about Obama, I think I had made maybe three years into his first term. And I was really chiding certain black folks, especially prominent black folks like Cornell West and Tavis Smiley and others, that were ragging on Obama because he hadn't really done anything specifically for black folks. And I was explaining that video that he was, he is the president of all folks in this nation. And, and that it would not be right for him to single out black folks simply because he's black. And I think as, as, as African Americans, we have to admit that if you had a white president that singled out white folks uh, and, and benefited white folks, well, I guess that's what we've had. <laughs> I guess that is kind of what we've had over the years. But, but that's it's because it's not right. We, we have to be bigger than that. I think as black folks, we need to begin to, we need to, begin to do what our, our, some of our ancestors have done that have suffered tremendously in this nation, like, like the sweet potato pie thing. I find it very interesting. First, I love pumpkin pie. And when I, uh, when I met my wife and, you know, when I met my wife's family, before we were married, they would always joke about me because, you know, white folks eat pumpkin pie, black folks eat sweet potato pie, right? And to me, that was always kind of funny because, I mean, I just love pumpkin pie. But, you know, what's, what's interesting is recently I went over to Inglewood. I was in Inglewood and I went to McDonald's and I noticed on the menu they had pumpkin pies and it was great. You know, so, I, so I bought a couple because I love pumpkin pie and they were pretty good. And about a week or so later, I happened to be in West Dayton. I was on Gettysburg, and I went to the uh, McDonald's on Gettysburg, and uh, I was gonna, I was excited because I was gonna get a pumpkin pie, you know. And I looked on the menu, and they had sweet potato pie. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> Can you believe that they got sweet potato pie in West Dayton at McDonald's on the menu, and they have pumpkin pie in Inglewood at McDonald's on the menu? That's kind of interesting, isn't it? But anyway, we consider that. Now, this has always been my theory, but I could be wrong. Um, but when you when you look at pumpkin pie, and then you look at black folks, that they've been able to take something like potatoes, sweet potato pie, and make it taste just as good, just like, so almost just like pumpkin pie. Or or maybe a better analogy would be the chitlins, you know? I mean, I mean, of course, the best part of the hog would be the pork chops, right? Have pork chops in certain parts of the hog that would be a little bit better. But black folks, because of the condition, the situation, and what they had access to in the old days, they, they perfected chitlins, so I've never tasted a chitlin before, you know. I and my mom and my sister like them and all, but, but or the feet and the toes or, the, you know, whatever else off the pig that, that folks eat, you know, I don't go there, you know. But, but uh, we've, black folks are able to take something undesirable and turn it into something just as desirable. And, and so what I'm suggesting is that when we, we look at the situation that we're faced with in the United States and, and looking at Obama, looking for something, you know, to give us, and I don't, we're, we're looking in the wrong direction, okay? First thing we need to recognize is, again, that black folks have been in this nation since this nation's inception, and we've always survived. And it doesn't matter how heinous the situations were. Certain times, especially early on, were more heinous than others. We have it relatively simple right now, although we're complaining a lot and living far below what we should based on the sacrifices, you know, of those that came before us. But, but I mean, I mean, we've been here. And we've survived through every kind of administration, through every kind of war, through every kind of situation, uh, through every kind of president. You know, I was in the military. I think Carter was president. But, but I mean, we, we've survived everything. And we're here today, okay? So we are survivors. We're able to take something that, that, isn't, that isn't very great and turn it into something that is great, okay? 
And, and so what I'm suggesting today is we just need to look at it a different way. We need to stop looking for a handout. We need to stop looking for somebody to give us something. What can we get out of this thing with Obama? Now, this guy, this guy responded to my video taking issue with my particular point that, that, that Obama has done a, a great deal for us simply by offering us an example that, that we, over hundreds of years, could have never imagined that, that, that we do have the opportunity to be greater than, than we ever believed that we could. See, the problem is that we have been in such a negative state for so long, we, we just, we got, we acquiesced to, oh, this is just the way that it is and it's not going to change. And, and what Obama did, he kind of shook us up. What I find very interesting is we are the descendants of slaves in this nation, most black folks. He is not a descendant of slaves. He, he came here, it's, it's almost he's a product of a white woman and a black African was able to come to this nation and shake up those of us that are descendants of slaves. He was not a descendant of slaves. So almost in a spiritual sense, he was able to come here from Africa and, and shake us up, his cousins, who, who are descendants of slaves and say, look, it's, and you're sleeping. It's not like it was. The times have changed. You can be a lot greater, and I'm going to show you how. It's one thing to tell somebody that they can be great. It's, it's one thing for Jesse Jackson to say, I am somebody. It's, it's, it's one thing to say a thing. It's another thing to demonstrate. I do that with my, my kids all the time, and I think that's the failing of many of parents in the lives of the children, that old saying, do as I say, not as I do. Well, why yet? Because I said. Why, Mom? Because I said so. Instead of demonstrating in their life what it is, the point that you're trying to get across. You, you know, I've been running with my daughter for the past uh, year or so, a little over a year. I was never a runner. <laughs> I was the guy who sighed always hurt when he was running. And we run over a mile a night through the week now. And so why I could have gone out there and said, honey, you need to run, you need to run. I could have just sat there. I did that once when I had that abdominal injury. I said, well, I can't run. I was really hurting. So I was going to sit it out. I sat down on a bench while she was running. I did that one time. I couldn't do that. I just had to run with the pain. Because it's one thing to tell you, to say something, to, to suggest it, that this is what needs to be done. It's something altogether different to lead the way to show how it's done, to show how it's done. So that's what Obama has done for us. That's what Obama has done for us. He showed us a thing. My son, my son is a young man, graduated from college last year. And, and he's on this management track, you know, in the real world, you know, doing this thing, making the right moves that he's going to. But, but still, I understand, although he's more educated than I am, I still understand the limitations, you know, in the real world, financial. Because you're always working for somebody. So I was telling him about, you know, the real estate thing. I mean, come on, even when we don't do it. I used to buy some real estate years ago and got out of the business years ago. And I've just been living a regular life, going to school, raising my child, you know, doing stuff like that. But I was telling him the other day, you know, what you need to do is, you need, now that you're single, you got no kids, all you got is a dog and a college degree, oh, man. You know, some of y'all know who are old now, that means that whole wide world is out there. Imagine, imagine, imagine that some of y'all, I'm 55, that are my age, older, right around my age, if, if you were single, with no kids, had a college degree, had your whole, and, and knowing what you know now, you know, man, you would make a killing out there, right? Well, that's what we could do with our kids. I'm telling my kids, oh, son, look, what you need to do, instead of going out and paying all this rent, go, go ahead now, you got good credit, everything is straight, go buy yourself a little duplex or something, live in half of it, and let your tenant pay for the mortgage. You're building your credit, you're getting a property. After a while, move, have two tenants do the same thing again. I'm laying out, because we all know this. We've all read, you know, Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and all these books. We know all this stuff, but for some of us, it's just too late to do that stuff. So I'm trying to tell my kid all that. As you know, kids, man, especially now that he's more educated than I am, right? He's like, I mean, he, he humored me, but I could tell he wasn't going to do it. He wasn't going to think about it. So guess what I'm doing this past couple of weeks? The real estate thing. I just, I had to dust myself off and say, look, I'm going to have to buy a piece of property. I'm going to you know, just do the thing, make some money, and demonstrate. So, so I started the process recently, put, a, put, a, you know, put, a, put an offer on a house that I think I'm going to get. And then I, I, I made this website 
with a picture of the house on there, offering it for the new price, after the after repair price and all. And, and I showed it to him. I don't have it yet, but I'm just preparing it. So I had the website. I just because I can create websites, I got it all going and everything. And I and all I did was I didn't even put a message. I sent him a text message with just the the URL, you know, just so he could click on it and it take him right to that website with that house being offered, you know, and all this. Man, he came right back. Wow, Dad, how'd you get a house at such a cheap price? I just explained it to him. <laughs> I, that, that was when I said the duplex, I meant, you know, a bank going type duplex. I had just explained it to him two weeks ago, but it was like he wasn't even really listening to me. He was humoring me because he loves me, but he wasn't really hearing me. And, and because I, I sent him this link and he was like, wow, how would you get it for so cheap? Because I demonstrated in front of him. And I laid it out about foreclosed properties after auction, the bank owns and trying to get rid of them. You know, and all this kind of stuff. I laid it out to him and I took that, that moment, that moment in time to explain everything. But suddenly, don't make a move until you call me. You know, so we can make sure we make the right move. But the point is, it, it was one thing when I told him. He was like, he didn't even hear me, really. But, but when I demonstrated in front of him, he was like, wow, how'd you do that? I mean, I just told you, son. That's how we are. That's what Obama's showing us. And, and so, so, no, the wrong thing for Obama to do is, is give a handout to black. Okay, black folks, we're going to give everybody an extra $1,000 a year. That's the wrong thing to do. We're going to give you 40 acres and a mule. That's the wrong thing to do. What Obama has done is he's come from Africa, the place of our forefathers, who were not slaves, and come to us and speaking to us the descendants of the brothers of his descendants were slaves speaking to us and saying, wake up. It's another way. You could be anything. You can be more. Look, I'm your president. Come on. He's the president of the United States of America twice. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what kind of negativity they had for him. They had negativity for Carter, uh, you know, the, the Republicans when he was in. They had negativity for Reagan, the Democrats, when he was in. We can go Ford and Nixon, we can Johnson, and we can go all down the list. Clinton, all the way, all the way up to present, all the way back to Wiseman people ragging on whoever was in office. But the fact is, this is a black man in office. There's nothing you can do. And the reality is, this is a message for white folks as well. Because if he can do it as a black man in this nation, given the history of black folks in this country, and then you can do it. There's no reason for anybody to be lamenting on, on the limitations, unless they have some kind of mental or physical malady that they just can't do what needs to be done. But nobody is standing in your way of success but you. That's what I'm telling you. So I, another, so I was sharing with this brother, you know, he was all lamenting because Obama didn't give, give him more property or money or something, a job in the little city that he lives in. I said, look, man, join the military. Get an education in the military. I know plenty of people that have done that. My sister's working on her PhD. My little sister, military. Come on now. I, and, 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 and so that's that. I know another brother, man, out of Michigan. He, I work with him. He, he got his education in the military. He said all his friends were going to jail. It was jacked up. He went in the Army, spent, he retired out of the Army, got the Bronze Star, you know, overseas recently, and, and he's out now. What I'm saying is that, that's a ticket out if your situation is jacked. Uh, you can go to school, get a grant. They money, they'll, they'll give you money to go to school based on your income. If it's nothing, they'll pay for your schooling. Move if there's no employment in that city. Talked to a white guy the other day on the, on the internet as well. He was lamenting. He, he had a master's degree and he was complaining, you know, because people on welfare and sitting around doing nothing, riding with their homies. You know, it's what he was really saying, right? <laughs> and, and getting high and just on welfare, using his tax dollars. He complained about that. I'm like, man, first of all, you need to change your negative attitude. He had a degree, a bachelor's degree in psychology, and then he went on to get his math. I'm like, well, somebody should have told you you wasted four years' worth of money on that, that psychology degree. You know, But take responsibility for your own errors while you're in the mess that you're in, first of all, and stop hating folks. 
Stop being mad at everybody. The, the energy that you're, you're using to be hating folks is negative energy. You're going to need positive energy to get yourself out of that mess so you don't have to work at Walmart. This cat was working at Walmart, you know, with a master's degree. Plus, he was out of shape. He was, you know, he was overweight, and his hair was all unkempt, and he was just looking sloppy and everything and just complaining. His whole aura was negative. He had a bad attitude, he had bad health, he was, had bad grooming, everything and everything about him was negative. And so he's, he's wondering why he's not getting, oh, you don't qualify, you need three years worth of experience. How can I get three years worth of experience? He's arguing with potential employers. To me, if you walk in there in good shape, healthy, clean, groomed properly, confident, if you, don't, if you don't have three years experience, you don't qualify, and you leave, and you say, well, if you reconsider, and you leave with the, with the right kind of message to these folks, they're going to think about you when you're gone. Exceptions are made every day. You know that. So what I suggested to that brother, I talked to both these guys yesterday, that guy said, the white guy with a master's degree, more educated than I am, I said, look, I said, first thing you got to do is stop worrying so much about what you can't change, okay? Okay? This is for you too. This is for everybody. I told him really he needs to meditate. And, and I don't mean necessarily like this. I don't mean all that stuff. I just mean get some quiet time every day at a certain time. I mean, come on now. You ain't working like you want to be working. You have time every day. Okay? You can make time every day. In the morning, maybe. 30 minutes. Just sit there quiet. Nothing on. Just be quiet and listen. Listen to your breathing. Listen to your thoughts. You begin to think things. Things will become more clear. In a couple of days, there will be a clarity about the things that are muddled and confused in your mind. Okay. Stop being negative about other folks. Stop focusing on other folks with that negativity. Get yourself in shape. Start eating right. Make, make a target. But this cat was obviously about 180 pounds overweight. He should make a determination. I'm going to lose 90 pounds. That's just for now. And, and, and shave. Get your hair cut. Get yourself in shape. Start exercising. What, what I suggested to him is, is there are certain things in your life that you cannot change. And I'm telling you as well, there are certain things that can't be changed, that you can't change, that at this particular point in your life, you don't have the ability to affect. So, so then affect everything that you can. Why are you out of shape? You can affect that. Why aren't you eating right? You can affect that. Why aren't you exercising? You can affect that. Why don't you have a haircut? You can affect that. Why don't you have a shave? You can affect that. Affect everything that you can in your life for the better. You do the, if this guy would do that for five months, his whole attitude would change. He'd have a new confidence, a wellness about himself. He would exude confidence for every good. He'd be looking good. He'd be, he'd be probably smelling good. <laughs> it had it together. Wherever he went, there'd be a confidence about him, and people would be clamoring. You know how it was in high school when you needed a girlfriend? And, and it's like you didn't have a girlfriend, and, and, and man, you really wanted one, and girls were like looking at you all crazy and everything. That's because, because you had that desperation about you and a negativity about you. When you're looking at other people that have what you don't have and you wish you had what they had, there's just a negativity about you. And if, you know, even when you have a girlfriend, you want to keep yourself sharp, looking good, smelling good, and all that stuff. You're not really caring. You're just looking crazy. But then, remember that in school? Then you had a girlfriend. You got a girlfriend. It was like all of a sudden all these other girls started knocking at your door. You know, started, started trying, to, trying to step up to you. Why? Because you didn't have that desperation about yourself anymore. You had a confidence about yourself, a pride. I got a girlfriend. There's a demeanor, a change in your personality and your whole attitude when you have somebody like that. And it was being picked up by people who weren't giving you the time of day before. That's how it is in your life. The problem is in this nation, we're so negative. We focus on the negatives and we're so hateful and, and everything about us is bad. And, 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 and so we're not attracting anything good. It's all like negative karma and all. And, and, and that's just the individual, but even at, on a worldwide level, as a nation, this nation seems to be consumed in intolerance of hate and negativity. Kill him, kill him. I saw this, this dog, somebody's dog was poisoned uh, like last week in Dayton. So, and, and I heard and one guy post on the internet, you know, if that was my dog, I would kill somebody dead. I mean, come on now. That's where our minds are at. 
We're, we're just jacked up, and as a nation, we are suffering as well, because karma is karma from, from, the, from the nation down to the individual. And look at the mess this nation is in. We are in a mess. We need to try and turn it around. We need to start trying, even the concept of America, of a nation, of, of, of one nation, and, and the unity that we have, we need to recognize all the people within the nation make up that nation. So if we're hating folks that, that look like Trayvon, or if we're hating the guy with the skin head, which is, you know, kind of easy to do, if we're hating gay folks, if we're hating people that look like Muslims, if we're hating people that are Muslims, if we're hating Americans, hate begets hate, negativity begets negativity, we need to start trying to find some love. And I'm saying the pathway to love is meditation and quiet time. Because the reality is none of us want to be hated. Everybody wants to be loved. If we would just begin to treat others like we want to be treated, we would find ourselves in a lot better condition. I seen, I remember a couple of years ago, I was walking down the street by one of the local high schools in the hood, Dunbar High School. And some kids were just getting off it. And I was walking down this street, Denison. And this boy comes up, and he's walking like real fast, you know. And he looks like he's a little, you know, off or something, but he's functional, and, he's, and he probably does well in school and all. But he said, those guys are, those guys are, uh, you know, are up to no good. And I'm like, what are, you, what are you talking about? Those guys. I look back. All of a sudden, this car pulls up. When about 10 kids, teenagers, jump out. They're chasing this guy. He ducks behind the house and starts, and then he's gone. And then it just happened right before me, before I even had, I said, hey! And I yelled out at these kids and leave them alone. And I just, I mean, I just said a little press. I got help there. And then next thing you know, the guys that were chasing him come out, they can't find him. He got away. I was so glad. But you know, as I was thinking about that situation later in that day, what I realized, I mean, they hated that guy, kid. They were after him. They were going to hurt him. They were going to do him bodily injury. But I realized from my work in juvenile detention, some of y'all know I was there for like 17 years, a minister at juvenile detention in Dayton, that, that most kids aren't bad, even the ones that are locked up, even the ones that do crime. That there's like a small percentage, maybe one or two percent, that are actually bad. And, and so, like even that group, where there's probably like ten or twelve young people that were after this, that most of them probably weren't like that. There's probably only one or two that were the instigators. But but see, in the mindset of someone who's not really bad, they would rather be part of the gang that's that's persecuting someone than be the one that's singled out and persecuted. So they'd much rather go along with the crowd and be part of that mess. And that's what you have. Most people are not bad. But you stay in that environment long enough, you begin to you begin to take all those characteristics, and eventually you become bad. Okay. We just we just need to find a way to, to recognize. First of all, a lot of the vitriol, a lot of the stuff we're spewing, a lot of the hate, a lot of the negativity. That's not really who we are. Not really. That's not who we once were. Think think back on who you were, how accepting you were, how well you were. And somewhere along the path of your life, you become very negative. I'm suggesting that we need to get rid of that. First as individuals, but then as a nation as well. Because the only way you're going to be well as an individual in this jacked up nation is to find peace within yourself. And the only way this nation is going to be well as a whole is if the people in this nation find that same peace. But at least it starts with you. And you can impart that into your kids and your family and see where it goes from there. There is a wellness. There is a wellness in love, in tolerance, in acceptance, in no hate. Consider that. That's your journey of wellness. That's your path to wellness. Your whole attitude will change. Your whole demeanor will change. When you begin to be a person of love and a person of happiness and, and peace and wellness, that, that will shine through. People will see that. They'll be attracted to that. And if it's a job or if it's a position or, or if it's just favor you need, people are attracted to that. And you'll see it'll be following you. It'll be in hot pursuit of you. All the days of your life. You we already know what we know. But sometimes, we just need to listen.